Hey, how's it going? This is James from James Films. And once again, I wanted to walk through how I put together one of these scenes and give you some really cool tips and tricks for some of these larger scale scenes and how to combine some elements from things like Mid Journey or Unsplash royalty free images to really fill out your scene. This is what I'm doing, you know, 2D kinds of scenes. I'll do this kind of comp uh, compositing work with waterfalls or other images to kind of overlay them. But a lot of the, the grunt work to really set these scenes up starts obviously with Blender. You have to give yourself a really good foundation to make it easier for yourself in Photoshop when you ultimately go in there and start compositing things. So this is uh, a preview of the final render that I got out of uh, Blender. You can see there already is kind of this water texture in here. And I talk about how I made this in uh, some of my previous tutorials. Uh, this is just a kind of a simple glass texture with some displacement here to kind of set the foundation. And then this is where I wanted to place this waterfall. And to kind of get inspiration for waterfall design, I'll often search a lot of different inspiration in Unsplash and look just to see how these things are framed out. So, you know, for example, with these waterfalls, you'll often see a lot of the rock face with some kind of like mossy elements, often lots of trees and branches. Uh, kind of cascading down here through. If you kind of keep looking through here, you'll see how it just kind of naturally carves out this valley too as you're going down. So I wanted to have this kind of characteristic valley with you know a lot of the rocky elements with some moss and, and lots of vegetation you know perched up on these hills. I also use some inspiration from uh, Mid Journey as well here too to kind of get some inspiration for what a waterfall would look like in these renders. And so you can see a couple of the the images I've I've searched for here. I actually ended up using a little bit of one of the images uh, that I generated to actually fill out the waterfall in post-production. Obviously, if I was gonna go back and animate this, I would have to use uh, video layers. Uh, and for that, I'll talk about that more in another video of how I actually animate a lot of the waterfalls or animated elements that you see in my renders. This is stuff that you can do in Blender but I often find myself really wanting to tweak a lot of little things, kind of painting stuff together. You'll see I often work a lot of different, you know, image masks, layer masks in here to kind of, you know, refine the waterfalls and make sure that they look proper in the scene. But to start things off, I want to go back into Blender and just talk about how I set these scenes up. And if you watched my last video, it was all about adding depth to your renders. I used a lot of those tips and tricks when filling out the scene to really have a strong foreground, middle ground, and background that really guides your eye naturally into the frame. And I'm definitely gonna come back and animate this one. And one great thing is for the animation, all of these trees that you see in the foreground here are from an asset library called Vegetation from B Production. I've linked it in the description. I believe they still have a sale going on right now if you're watching this in the end of November when this first comes out here uh, for Cyber Monday, Black Friday. Uh, they're a really great asset library that comes with like a bunch of different plants and trees and flowers. And they also, what I really like, come with this animation preset too, which you can kind of tweak a bit uh, to animate all of these different things. And it's simple as just checking on a box like animate trunk or animate leaf and you can adjust the force and the scale, kind of the, the noise basically of that uh, wind on all these plants, which is really great and adds you know some extra nice life to your scene. So I'll probably come back and animate this one, but to set this scene up, you can see if I zoom out here, I've only used where I need it to uh, have these objects in, and it kind of is this natural you know curve, almost curving all the way up to the kit batch elements in the background. You can see some are just kind of floating in air, but you won't be able to tell that if you're just looking from the camera view that those are just floating back there. I just have those all the way back there to give depth. And once again, depth is the key for all these to really make a really cool, believable scene. So I've kind of carved out using some sculpting, uh, this kind of natural valley here. And I filled it in with some rock elements and cliffs and stuff, kind of guiding your eye up to the top elements. I've then put over this kind of standard ocean texture that I developed in previous tutorials. Uh, you can see this is just a, a water plane here with uh, some it's a very simple ocean texture on here, and I'll talk a bit about how I made that in some other videos too. Um, and that just kind of gives me that nice starting point. So you kind of see this little bit of displacement here, kind of showing that little ripple for water. Just this kind of a guiding line almost for me as I'm uh, filling this element out here. And then I actually, I render this out of Blender, and you know, this is where kind of a lot of the work really begins for me with editing stuff in Photoshop. If I go over to Photoshop, this is the base layer. I have a second layer here where I kind of do a little bit of dodging and burning to kind of make a little bit stronger foreground here. You can see basically what I've done is just highlight some of the places where the sun is hitting to really nicely frame this middle part because I really want to draw your eye into the waterfall. The waterfall is going to be the hero element of the scene. And you can kind of see in the background here, there is some already some lighting there on that rock there that I've enhanced further. And if I go back into Blender, you can see I've got a couple point lights 
that I position where I'm going to be putting this waterfall to just really highlight that area. And I've also put some kind of leading through this canyon here too. And these, if I go over to the lighting tab, are just this nice warm light, you know, with some pretty strong power to just kind of really draw your eye in. And I actually have it really strong here in the distance. This is up at around 2000 uh, watts here in the distance for that you know top part of the waterfall where you're really going to be seeing that feature and again this is just kind of a guiding line for me and you can really see it pop here if you look at this render view so obviously i do have you know some sun lamps coming in here i use the physical starlight atmosphere add-on to give me this kind of you know atmospheric glow to the whole scene but i really wanted to direct that light even more so using those point lights will really help you out a lot if you're starting to add these kinds of things in here I then actually did a little bit of work in the sky here. I added this kind of moon in here and then added a bit more of a sunset color to it to kind of match the rest of the scene. Did some uh, extra editing here. So if I turn all these layers off here, you'll see I did some brightness adjustments, a little bit of vibrance to make some more saturation, really pull out the kind of purple and yellow from the sky. And that Milky Way sky that I got is actually from uh, the Unsplash library. They have a lot of royalty free images. And I actually did um, a little bit of editing here in Photoshop. They have this really new, really cool new feature where you can actually just go to select and sky. So I just selected just the sky and it automatically created a mask for just the sky. So I was able to apply this initially as a clipping mask and add that sky just in that one area, which is nice. So it kind of saves me some time. So I don't have to kind of manually go through and paint things out. You know, I've combined a couple skies in here. I actually added a moon from a different layer in here and then just a little bit of brightness adjustment here overall to tweak those colors really make it pop. So that is for the sky background. And this next part was really fun. This is actually um, from the uh, this uh, render that I made actually, well, I didn't make it, Midjourney made this for me using some parameters that I put in uh, with an image prompt actually from one of my own renders. I put in a prompt showing, you know, one of my castle renders that I made before and asked for you know a waterfall scene with some really cool vegetation and castle elements. And this is what it spit out. And I really liked that initial composition idea that it gave me for this kind of cool castle valley with some really cool golden glow coming in from this side. But I really liked the waterfall that it generated and I thought it looked pretty photorealistic to the most part. It looks a little bit painted because obviously it's sourcing from a lot of paintings and artwork. Uh, but I just wanted to isolate just that section there and blend it in with my scene. So I actually added in a, a layer mask here where I kind of painted around. If I turn this on and off, you can see what I did. I kind of matched this in with my terrain. I actually removed a couple of the pieces of vegetation there because I liked kind of this mossy element that it had. Uh, and then I just kind of painted around and really took my time to go through with uh, a brush. I use a, a tablet actually to kind of go through and really refine my details in here to paint that in. Uh, then you kind of have to match this a bit better because you can see that the hue and saturation and the brightness is off from this. So I added a little bit of adjustment to hue and saturation to kind of pull back the colors a bit, change the brightness a bit to kind of darken it up so it kind of blends it a bit better. You can really see that blend in particular with this moss leaf area here, blends it in really well, and then did like a selective adjustment to kind of match that castle, the darkness of it in the distance there. And then I just kind of do some overall adjustments here. I added a curve layer just to kind of, you know, desaturate and kind of wash out the image, make it look a little bit more photographic. And if I pull this curve up here, you see it's just a super light S curve here. I just pulled down ever so slightly on the shadows here just to kind of darken them up a little bit. Uh, pulled up the midtones just a little bit to kind of wash out the image. And then just pulled the highlights just down slightly there. Um, so super light adjustment there, but it really goes a long way. Uh, I've adjusted some levels here. This is where I do a lot of uh, adjustment to kind of wash out the image. And I feel like it, it does a lot of work to kind of blend overall. So I often will pull back on the midtones here a bit to kind of de um, wash out the image. It gives it this filmic look to it. I don't, if you notice, like super contrast images. Uh, I often will kind of have a lot of low contrast images because like I said, it really does emulate that film photography look if that's kind of what you're looking for. Um, you know, pulling back on the highlights, pulling back on the shadows, and really just kind of washing out the image gives it that really cool photo look. I add in a subtle warming. This is a photo filter. I just use a little bit of warming and then some vibrance I'll add back in here. Again, these are all super, super subtle. If I click on these, um, you can see it's just a, a slight decrease in vibrance. And then I compensate that by increasing the saturation by plus eight. Just a super subtle touch, but it really, <laughs> you might not even notice what it's doing if I turn this on and off, but it is, adding just a subtle yellow glow. If you look at these leaves in particular, you'll see it as just a little bit of yellow back in. And that is just enough for me to really draw your eye into that middle of the frame. I do an overall brightness and contrast adjustment here. Again, super subtle. Actually, this one's not even doing anything. I'm not sure why I have this in there. That did nothing. <laughs> so subtle, it's not even doing anything. 
I then also add in a mist, a little bit of mist here, just to kind of further um, add low contrast to this render. And what I did is um, I've got a couple different brushes that I'll use. Uh, and some of these you can just download uh, online. I've got some different brush libraries. This is one I think I got from yeah, Evident Concept Art Brush. It's a nice one, but there's also some other kind of misty ones. And usually I'll just pick like the cloud brush or some other kind of brushes that have a variation in the density of the brush and just kind of paint in some mist and clouds and stuff throughout the scene and then kind of blend that in with a little bit of linear dodge. And if I kind of crank this all the way up, you'll see what it actually looks like. Um, so you can see it's this kind of cloudy thing if I just turn this to normal. There's just like these little clouds with some kind of subtle bright to it. And I, I'm trying to add that extra bit of brightness to where those bright layers of light already are. You can kind of do this as a technique to add more depth to your scene. It's like a, a dodge and burn kind of technique, but with mist. And then I just blend that in very, very subtly with the renders. So you can see I put it, I think, around like 11 or 12%. I then add a color lookup on top of this. And I usually just will pick in like kind of a, one of the default profiles. This one I don't think I did much of anything, but usually I'll go for like the crisp warm look or something like that. And then you can really pull back on the effect of it. So if this is just at its default, it's like way too crunchy, <laughs> super contrasty. So I usually pull this back uh, quite a bit here. I did a little bit of color balance just because it was looking a little bit too warm, uh, especially in the shadows here. I kind of wanted this to be a little bit more purpley like the sky. Uh, so I go into color balance and this is where it really just kind of pulls the image back, makes it feel very cozy to me at least, and really draws your eye even more into that frame. I kind of want the, the natural border of the forest. And if I was going back to my reference, you can really see these natural borders, um, you know, the really dark, wet rocks here surrounding this. Um, so I really wanted to go for that effect and have that kind of dark, natural vignette almost from the uh, trees and foliage around there. So that is what that is doing in the color balance. If I go into it here, it's adjusting the midtones here, pulling up some more blues, you know, pulling up some more of those greens to really bring out the deep uh, tones of the forest and then pulling back on some of the red highlights. So, you know, everything was kind of red and fall like before. I just kind of pulled back on that a bit in the midtones. Uh, similarly for the highlights, you know, I pulled back on the reds, added some more blues and greens in there to the highlights. And then for the shadows, um, added in some more cyan, that kind of deep blue uh, that you have in the, ro in the rocks there, uh, and added some more blue in there too. So that really does a nice effect to really add out the scene. And this is pretty much the final render. Um, but yeah, so that is the final render. I uh, hope you learned some tips and tricks from this and be sure to subscribe for more. See you on the next one.